Hi, this is Dr. Karen Becker, and today we're going to discuss seizures in pets. A seizure is an unanticipated abnormal electrical activity that happens in your pet's brain. This can range from symptoms of a minor twitch to a complete grand mal seizure where the animal loses consciousness. The seizures can last from just a few seconds where you're not even sure if it was a seizure. It could be a minor head bobble. It could even look like a tremor or a spasm or a cramp to uh, lasting many, many minutes. Uh, really, in a nutshell, what a seizure is, is, is inside of the brain there are, of course, electrical impulses. There are excitatory impulses and there are inhibitory impulses. All, th all throughout the day, at all times, there is this ratio of excitatory to inhibitory impulses. When the excitatory impulses overtake the inhibitory impulses, your pet can have a seizure. And depending on what part of the brain it happens and how, how much excitatory impulses are, are released, your pets can have minor twitches to grand mal seizures. There, this ratio of exactly when there's an overtaking with excitatory impulses is called seizure threshold. And the goal for uh, all of us is to have pets that have very high seizure thresholds, which means um, there are very few things that could stimulate a potential seizure in our pets. But the, we know that there are some things that do influence where your pet seizure threshold lies, like genetics and head trauma and infections, as well as toxic exposure can all influence potential seizure threshold in pets. Every seizure has three phases. The pre-ictal phase is the phase just before a seizure. It can last a few seconds to maybe a couple of minutes. When people have seizures, there can be auras. People can sometimes know that they're going to have a seizure, and we know that this is also probably true for pets because during the pre-ictal phase, your pet may act abnormal. He or, she become he or she could become restless or nervous. Sometimes dogs will come to their owners and want to be soothed because they can tell that their body is having some abnormal electrical activity. Then the seizure happens, that's called ictus. Uh, then after the seizure, there's a post-ictal period that can range from a few minutes to several hours. The post-ictal period, you could see a whole variety of different responses. Your pet could be confused or afraid. He or she could stumble or even act blind. She could bump into things. You could see her um, nervous and tense and just want to be by herself. And really, I think it's very confusing for pets because they don't know exactly what just happened to their body. That post-ictal phase actually can last up to many hours after a seizure. There are several different types of seizures that pets can have. A petite mal seizure or a mild seizure could be as minimal as just um, eye flicker, abnormal eye flicker or eye, mo eye movements in pets. Grand mal seizures uh, uh, is where the animal becomes unconscious, typically falls down. There can be paddling, vocalization. Some pets can lose bowel and bladder control. Um, the animals are unconscious during this time, and there can be jerking and twitching associated with the seizure. Status epilepticus is a grand mal seizure that doesn't stop. It is a, med it is a medical emergency as animals don't breathe well during uh, the seizure and animals can die in status epilepticus. So if your pet has a grand mal seizure, it's critical uh, and is not coming out of it, it's critical that you get your dog or cat to the animal ER immediately be to, to be able to save its life. Cats also have a type of, commonly kitties have focal motor seizures, which is just where one part of their body can have a seizure. You can see a twitch or a tremor, or you, it almost can look like a cramp. Uh, most common in cats and small dogs are focal motor seizures. And cluster seizures are seizures that occur multiple times in a day. And many cluster seizures are urgent care situations. If you have a pet that is seized more than once in a day, we really recommend that you visit your veterinarian because that seizure potential is real low and there's a likelihood that your pet could continue to seize or have progressively more intense seizures. There are lots of different causes of seizures. Obviously head trauma, if there's swelling on the brain, that can cause a seizure. Brain tumors are an incredibly common source of seizures for dogs and cats that are older. So it would be very unlikely that your dog develop, develops epilepsy at 12 years of age. If you have an older dog that's beginning to have abnormal electrical activity, chances are you need to be thinking about, unfortunately, it being a brain tumor. Bacterial, viral, fungal, and parasitic causes can also cause seizures. Cervical subluxation is a cause that many pet owners don't realize. I see a lot of dogs that are chained out. They run to the, into the chain after a bunny. They have high cervical trauma, and so that C1, the atlas, or the axis, C1 and C2 can be traumatized. 
C1, the first cervical vertebra in animals, articulates with the brain stem, and if there's increased cerebral spinal fluid pressure in the brain stem, that can lead to a seizure. So um, we recommend harnesses for animals, uh, not only on walks, but if they're going to be chained out, it's important that there not be any pressure on their neck because high cervical subluxations or chiropractic issues of the neck can actually also cause increased seizure potential. Uh, congenital malformation of the brain stem is common, so Cavalier King Charles Spaniels are a breed that are well known to have some from birth birth defects of how the brain stem or brain, um, the cranium, lines up to be able to effectively circulate cerebral spinal fluid. Liver disease actually, now liver disease in a roundabout way can cause seizures. The liver is designed to obviously process toxins and if the liver is not effectively removing toxins, toxins build up in the bloodstream and can cross the blood brain barrier. Pets can have a condition called hepatic encephalopathy which can lead to toxic based seizures. Heat stroke as well as low blood sugar, diabetic animals obviously can have low blood sugar based seizures. And other metabolic conditions such as hypothyroidism can also cause seizures. Interestingly, in one study, 70% of dogs that were clinically hypothyroid had a history of seizures, so something, something to think about. Lots of different types of poisonings can cause seizures, lead poisoning, mercury poisoning, plant poisoning, marijuana, saco palm, as well as castor bean plants can all induce seizures in pets. Fertilizers, pesticides, insecticides, herbicides, all well known to cause seizures in pets. Human drugs like non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications, antihistamine, human dry, diabetic medications can all cause seizures in pets, as well as um, antidepressants. Uh, veterinary drugs, also well known to cause potential seizures. In fact, the neurotoxic uh, topical chemicals like flea and tick preventives are potentially um, included in reasons why dogs and cats can seize. And last but not least, vaccines. We know that vaccines can do two things for pets. First of all, we still use thimerosal or the organomercury compound as an adjuvant in most veterinary vaccines. Needless to say, heavy metals cross the blood-brain barrier and the liver, there's no liver in your pet's central nervous system, so there's no removing of those heavy metals. The second way that vaccines can cause seizures is vaccines are implicated in autoimmune encephalitis, so it can spark an autoimmune reaction which can cause secondary swelling on the brain, which in turn can cause seizure disorders in your dogs and cats. Uh, nutritionally related issues can also cause seizures. This is one that a lot of people don't think about. Uh, diet has a twofold potential implication when it comes to potential seizures. Number one, if your pets have systemic allergic responses. So if your pets have food allergies, there can be a systemic inflammatory response that can decrease your pet seizure potential um, or threshold. There uh, also can be synthetic chemicals, preservatives, uh, emulsifiers, or ingredients in your pet's food that can cause reactions and systemic inflammation that can decrease your pet seizure threshold. So something to think about if your pet's been on the same diet or if your pet has a diet that is highly processed, something to think about. On a side note, for humans, uh, they're using ketogenic diets. Ketogenic diets are no carbohydrate, moderate fat, high protein diets. Now what's interesting is that a ketogenic diet for a person is actually a species appropriate diet for pets. They're using ketogenic diets to help control seizures in humans. I will tell you that uh, when I do see seizuring patients at my practice, I highly recommend that they stop the carbohydrates and put their pets on a moderate fat, high protein, no carb diet, not just because it's um, their species appropriate diet, but because we do know that getting some of those pro-inflammatory carbohydrates out of the diet is a good idea for helping to, to control systemic inflammation. So there are some also herbs that can decrease seizure threshold. The herbs themselves don't cause seizures, but if your pet has seizures or a low seizure threshold, there are some herbs and essential oils that can potentiate seizures. Herbs like kava kava, skull cap, evening primrose oil, borage uh, seed oil, golden seal, ginkgo, ginseng, and wormwood have all been implicated. Essential oils such as eucalyptus, fennel, hyssop, pennyroyal, rosemary, sage, and tansy have also been implicated in decreasing your pet seizure threshold. If your pet has a seizure, um, it's important that you let your veterinarian know. It's obviously if they don't come out of the seizure, you need to seek emergency veterinary care immediately. Uh, once your veterinarian rules out all of this long list of potentials when it comes to why your pet could be seizing, and if your pet um, passes all of these, these tests to determine that in fact none of these issues are going on, your pet is left with a diagnosis of idiopathic epilepsy, which means seizure of unknown origin. 
Epilepsy means that we don't have a foundational reason for why PET sees. And most of the time, veterinarians will discuss with you starting anti-seizure or anti-epileptic medication. Now, at my practice, the rule of thumb is this. Pets need to have more than a seizure a month, grand mal seizure a month, in order to even consider drug therapy. Uh, but it's important to realize that there are a whole host of natural substances that can help increase seizure threshold and decrease seizure potential. At my practice, we use acupuncture and herbs as well as chiropractic care, nutraceutical therapy, to help extend seizure threshold. And we can either use this as a sole treatment group for mild seizures, or if we have animals that are having consistent grand mal seizures, we can blend an integrative protocol with some drug therapy to be able to reduce the dose of drugs needed to help control seizures. Most importantly, if you have a dog that's had a seizure, it's important that you're tracking date, time, and the intensity at which your dog seizes. We've seen correlations at my practice between uh, monthly seizures or seasonal seizures or seizures certain times of the year or certain times of the month when it comes to a full moon, strange but true. If we're able to track a potential cycle with your dog's seizures, we'll be able to help you formulate a plan that can effectively control your dog's seizures, of course, starting with the most natural treatment option first.